So let's start. So if you ask a non-Java programmer, do you know Java? So he's going to ask what? What are you talking about? So uh, if you look at the development time required for PEG, 10 lines of PEG statements would be 200 lines of codes in Java. Okay, so that is what is the significance of making something as very small. Okay, plus the biggest advantage of PIG is that it has got a lot of inbuilt operators like your join operator, group, filter, sort, etc. So you don't have to write a code for that. So the default operators are always there. So that is what is advantage. So you don't have to learn Java at all. Okay, Abhishek Savant was saying, are PIG Hive do the same job or do they do different? Okay, so what does HDFS understand, Abhishek Savant? only MapReduce. So either you can do a traditional MapReduce code which a Java developer will do or if you don't know Java, if you like more of scripting, you can start with a pig wherein you will do a scripting approach and if you are more from the SQL world, you will use Hive. So all three of them do the same thing but then it is giving you the choice of how to go about doing it. But then there are some limitations, there are some strings attached to it. So like for example in Hive, you can do only structured data. In PIG, you can do both structured and semi-structured data. You can't do unstructured data, whereas in MapReduce, you, would, you can do anything. So that is the difference at a very high level, Abhishek. Okay? Hope that makes it clear. And after today's session, I would want you to very seriously look at the examples as well as look at the Hadoop Definitive Guide for PIG. Thank you. So let me move on. So why was PIG created? When we already had MapReduce, why did you need PIG? So PIG was actually created by uh, Yahoo. So they had a lot of ad hoc work that needed to be done. They wanted it to be done on the client machines. That means they didn't want people to log on to the cluster and do things. So this was their two primary requirements. So PIG was created because you wanted an ad hoc way of creating and executing MapReduce on huge data sets. Okay, and if you are if you are having non-Java programmers, then that is a very big challenge trying to do that. They wanted to do it in a RAD fashion, rapid application development fashion. They didn't have the Java guys. Okay, they had people who knew more of scripting. Okay, so that's why no Java is required, and that's why it was developed by Yahoo. So when I say ad hoc way, what do you mean by ad hoc is? What do you do typically in OLAP? You will have some kind of standard reporting, right? So if your reports are known at the end of a week or at the middle of a week or on every Thursday you want some reports to be done, so the reports are all standardized. So that is what is uh, typically reporting, but ad hoc is the opposite of reporting. When I don't want to do something, I see that there is a sudden surge in something or there is a need what happens and you want to analyze it at that time. That is what is the meaning of ad hoc. Okay, so uh, Hassan had asked me, can you just uh, revise ad hoc? So this is what is the meaning of ad hoc. Okay, that means it is not in a structured way. That means it is not uh, scheduled. It's not like reporting. So this is the reason why PIG was created by Yahoo. So if you look at PIG, so again a quick description of what is PIG. We have seen it as what it is. It's an open source high level data flow system. It provides a simple language for queries and data manipulation. The language is called as PIG Latin, which is compiled into MapReduce jobs that is going to be running on Hadoop. Why is it important? Because companies like Google, Yahoo, and Microsoft are collecting huge amount of data sets in the form of click streams. Click streams means where do you click on a web page once you log into it. Looking at your search logs and web crawlers, web crawlers are nothing but uh, a, the, the complete set of files, how you are. It's something similar to your click streams. Uh, search logs is nothing but your error logs. So a lot of analysis is happening on these kind of semi-structured data nowadays. So some form of ad hoc processing and analysis of all of this information is required. Although there is nothing like reporting, okay, reporting is typically done on an OLTP data. So that is what is the advantage of PIG or that is what is PIG friends. So let's start. 
So like I said, how was started off by uh, Facebook. That was a time when Jeff Hammerbash was there and for people who have read your Hadoop Definitive Guide Hive chapter, you will see this was founded by uh, uh, in Jeff Hammerbash's time when he was as a part of uh, Facebook. Now he is a part of Cloudera. Okay, so in those days, what was happening is that the data was getting uh, what Facebook 2009 I'm talking about. The data that Facebook was getting was very huge, and they wanted to look at different ways in which how they can store and they can mine or they can analyze that particular data. And they, they heard a lot of stories about uh, Hadoop, but then the problem was that uh, Hadoop needed Java programming to be done, and they had a lot of uh, PHP, Python guys, and that people. People who know SQL, so they wanted something wherein people can do analysis using SQL on HDFS. That was not there in those days. Okay, so that's the reason why Jeff Hammerbash put in a team to create this uh, 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 Hive component, and then he had open sourced it. Okay. Hey, Sagar was saying my network was down. Did I miss any important thing? Sagar, uh, you missed the demo of uh, uh, semi-structured analysis using a log file, and we are just starting with Hive right now. Okay, so you can look at uh, your recording, Sagar, and you should be back on track. We, ju we are just starting with our first slide on Hive. You're lucky, we, but you missed the whole section of uh, uh, semi-structured analysis using PIG. That's okay. Not not major sagar. Cool. So it was started at Facebook. Data was collected via nightly cron jobs into the Oracle DB. ETL was typically, like I said, hand coded Python. ETL was there because ETL is nothing but extract, transform, and load, wherein you will extract the data from multiple data sources, you'll transform it, and then you will load it into uh, a common source. And the way the data grew from 2006 to about uh, ten, 1 terabyte a day in 2007, it was about 10 terabyte in 2012, and in 2013, early 2014, it's about 25 terabyte of messages. That is the way how the data size has been growing in Facebook. Okay, so this is the high background, friends. And we have already seen uh, how to start with a terminal uh, with a putty. Okay, o open up putty and uh, you will be simply, you will have to set up, I hope Sagar you have set up your hive on your Cloudera, you will type sudo hive and when you say show databases, it should show you OK and default. Perfect friends. Fine, so what is hive? It's a data warehousing package that is built on top of Hadoop. Then what is the purpose of it? It is primarily used for data analysis. It is targeted towards users who are comfortable with plain SQL. It is similar to SQL and is called as HiveQL. It is for managing and curing only structured data. So this is where differences come in. So what is the purpose of Hive? Since we are using a SQL, so that means rows and columns, that means it can be used only for structured data. You cannot use Hive for semi-structured and unstructured data. Okay? Next thing is, it abstracts the complexity of Hadoop. Very true because you don't have to write a MapReduce program. Again, I see a lot of people uh, liking this. No need to learn Java and the Hadoop APIs. You're not going to write a single MapReduce code again today, Hassan. Okay? And it was developed by Facebook and contributed to the community. And Facebook has analyzed several terabytes of data every day using Hive. So now if you look at the Hadoop Definitive Guide, all of you, in the Hive chapter, there is a comparison between your SQL and HiveQL. I would sincerely recommend you to go through each of those links and see uh, what the differences are sometime this week. So if you have any questions, you can ask me next week. But then that is must for you, friends. Fine? So this is the basics of Hive. Okay, Hassan, you okay, sorry. Uh, today in the morning, I, had, I have another student in the morning batch who is a non-Java programmer. His name is Rajib Goon. So I got confused between Hassan and Rajib. Okay, so Aditya was saying, so what is the Hadoop picture for your, uh, this Derby is not uh, a Hadoop part, right? So, you know, Hive is like a beehive, so Derby doesn't have a picture friend. Cool. So Hassan, you are also a Java guy, right? So non-Java programmers would love this. 
Java programmers, of course, knows your plain uh, Java code, and of course, they can excel in this also. Cool, cool, Aditya. So Abhilash was saying we are pointing to a directory because we are using local. Hey, uh, by default, it will always have to be pointed to a directory where it can be stored. So since we are using embedded uh, Derby Meta Store, it has to be either a local directory or it could be a shared network directory also. Exactly. Even in a cluster, we will point it to one of the uh, machines where the database would be. Fine, Abhilash. Now, let's move on. So what is Hive? It defines SQL-like query language called as QL. We will see hands-on on it very soon. Okay, it is like your data warehouse infrastructure, wherein you'll dump everything into your data warehouse. It provides tool to enable easy uh, data ETL, extract, transform, and load. And it allows people to, I mean developers, to plug in their custom mapper and reduce their code so that whatever is your custom uh, scripts that can also be executed, uh, you can plug in your custom mapper and uh, reduce a code. This is what we'll be seeing next Sunday in our advanced hive, in our chapter number, in our module number seven. So now let's compare hive and pig. So what is pig? Pig is a procedural data flow language. You know that, whereas Hive is a declarish uh, SQL language. So yesterday you saw how to uh, pick something. You will say A is equal to load my data, dump A. Here you will say select star from my table. Then who is going to use uh, PIG? PIG is going to be used by programmers and researchers because it is not for reporting, whereas Hive is primarily going to be used by data analysts and it is going to be used for reporting. So that's the difference between your pig and hive, okay? Another difference, pig is on the client side, hive is on the server side, on the cluster, I mean. And the fourth difference would be your, suddenly I forgot, yeah, uh, no, client and server we have done. One more difference uh, I had thought about. No, it's not coming to my mind. There's another slide which will talk about more differences, guys. So just uh, let's focus on these three differences. Hey, that's right. Good, good, Janardhan, that's what, it came to my mind, then I lost it. Uh, PIG is basically for semi-structured data and Hive is for structured data. Trust me, that's exactly what I wanted to say, but then it, I, I lost it. Cool. So Aditya was saying, can PIG come before Hive? PIG output be used by Hive? Why not? See, all of them are individual, and where is the output of all of these things stored? In HDFS, right? So as long as the data is in HDFS, you can use any tool to pick up the data. Fantastic. So now, there we go. See, this is the slide I was talking about. A much more uh, detailed uh, breakup of the differences between pig and hive. First language we have seen, it is SQL-like, it is pig Latin. If you talk about schema, in hive you have to create a table, whereas in pig we, we never created a table. We just said as so and so. Uh, so it is a kind of an implicit schema over there. Here we had to create a table specifically. If you look at partitions, okay, in hive you can create partitions. In pig you cannot create partitions. If you talk about a server, Hive has got something called as a thrift server using which it can it can have other applications communicate to it. It is called as Apache Thrift, which is a RPC based mechanism again developed by uh, Facebook. So let me go down here and tell you what is Apache Thrift. Uh, no, sorry, not developed by Facebook. It is developed by yeah, it is developed by Facebook. Sorry. It is developed by Facebook, so go down to Wikipedia. It is basically for like a RPC call, language independent RPC call, there it is. Thrift is an ideal interface definition language that is used to define and create services for different languages. It is used as an RPC framework and was developed by Facebook for a scalable cross-language service deployment. So this is somewhat like Corba for people who are aware of Corba common object request broker architecture. So this is somewhat like Corba. Okay, so you would need something, sorry. So you would need something called as an Apache Thrift server for our, just let me close this. Yeah, we would need an Apache Thrift server for our server logic, whereas PIC doesn't have anything of that sort. UDF functions can be created in both. 
custom serializer deserializer can be created in both dfs direct access okay so in hive we will never point to the actual uh, hdfs folder whereas in pig we need that remember we said load slash test dot lock today so there would be an explicit uh, dfs access whereas uh, there would be an implicit dss dfs access in hive join order sort uh, your command line shell your streaming uh, that is live data analysis all of them are possible in both you have a pretty good web interface for Hive that is called as HWI Hive Web Interface, whereas PIC does not have that. And JDBC, ODBC is there in Hive, although in a limited fashion, we don't have any JDBC, ODBC in PIC. So these are some of the differences, folks. So Aditya was saying, then how are files pointed for new files? We will look at that, Aditya, once we create a table. Streaming Janardhan means uh, whenever the live data is coming in, how do I do analysis of the streaming data? Streaming data is typically uh, put in with uh, via a standard in and a standard out. Okay? That is what is streaming. Hey, JDBC, ODBC is, I told you there's a driver, right? So Hive has got a JDBC, ODBC driver, whereas PIC does not have a driver. That is the difference, friends. Cool. You're welcome. So now the last diagram, and then we have to get into the hands-on. Yep, there it is. So.